Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. day that he's blessed us to see and today is the birthday of the church Amen. for today is Pentecost Sunday hallelujah and I know that some of you might not understand what that means, but hopefully by the end of the service, you will. And you can give God some glory for all that he's done. He did it because he loved us. Is that right? Amen. Amen. We honor all of our elders and ministers, to our assistant pastor, Pastor Fly in our absence, to Pastor Hodge, to all of the deacons, to all of our visitors. And to you and you and especially you, the saints of the Most High God, somebody ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You know, a lot of times we look at the saints and we think they never go through nothing. Everything is all right. Everything is okay. And, you know, but I want you to know that in spite of what we go through, we still give God praise. Is that right? Can anybody attest to that? In spite of what I'm going through, I'm still giving God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In spite of. We understand that in this life, you're going to get some hits. You're going to go over some bumps. Your tire might even become flat. But in spite of all of that, how many know you can still go on three tires until you get that fourth one to the right place? We just keep on moving. And we praise God for who he is. Amen. Amen. All right. I, I would like to I would like for you to stand. And we're going to declare a decree over the word. We the Grace New Covenant Apostolic Church a body of believers enforce God's original plan and purpose in our lives and in the life of our ministry. We are citizens of the kingdom of God and we have what we say. We are doers of the word of God and not just hearers only. We are what the word of God says we have what the word of God say we can have. And we can do what the word of God say we can do. We hold fast to our confession of faith. We do not turn coward, faint, lose heart, or give up. We decree and declare increase, multiplication, and blessings today in Jesus' name. I am Grace New Covenant. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. While you remain standing, I would like to call your attention to just one verse, well, maybe two. In the book of Acts, chapter 1. 
Starting with verse number eight. One and eight. But ye shall receive power after that Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. And the cloud received him out of their sight. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you, we give you praise, and we honor you, and we thank you, Lord, for this blessed word on today. We ask, Lord, that you may let it explode in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirit. Father, open up our understanding, O oh God, that we can see what you've done for us. Lord, because we want to just give you glory for it. And everything that we discover about you and everything that we learn of the sacrifice that you made for us and show your amazing love, we just want to give you praise for it. Because, Lord, we realize every day that we are unfit, but because of your love, you do it anyway. Now, Father, have your way, send your anointing, throw on yourself in this service. In Jesus' name, somebody shout hallelujah. Y'all don't mind if I just sing a verse of a song, do you? Amen. I know we got singers in the house. But we also have some joyful noises. So let all the joyful noises real, real, wave your hand. Amen. As a deer panthers for the waters Oh, my soul longeth after you. Oh, you mount my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. As a is for the waters oh my soul longeth after thee oh you alone are my heart desire and I long to worship thee the sentiments of my heart so Bishop what are you saying I'm saying there's a there's a worship and there's a praise that's on the inside that want to get out it wants to get out you know sometimes we, we look at praise and, and worship as running up and down the aisles but sometimes we can praise the Lord right where we stand and I say that we at least ought to honor God by standing as we worship him because of his goodness and his mercy and his love that he has shed. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, musicians. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. I still would have been trying to figure out the key. I told y'all. It depends on what day it is. I've been singing this song all morning. But today I want to talk to you concerning Pentecost. Pentecost simply means 50. So in all of that, we're going to cover some things that God said 
in this word. I'm going to, I've been accused of not being able to teach that I preach, but I'm going to try to teach this morning. I woke up real early and uh, I had the TV on and there was a man sitting on this great big old pulpit. He was sitting there with his table and his chair and he was just teaching. And I said, you know, I could do that. I can teach. I know. I, I see your expression right now, looking at your neighbor, saying, "No, it ain't gonna happen." <laughs> Amen. But I want to share with you some scriptures, so we're gonna kind of dance around some scriptures this morning as we travel through this Pentecost Sunday. Whenever God wants to do something, or whenever man is in trouble. He sent his word. He sends his word to heal. He sends his word to encourage. And he sends his word to deliver. <clears throat> Is that right? We see it from the very beginning when God said, let there be light. And there was light. Whatever he says, it happens. And I want you to know that we have that same ability because we are children of his. If we have been born of the spirit. To be born naturally does not automatically make us children with an inheritance. How many know that every child don't have an inheritance? Right. Even if the father and the mother have to give... Sometimes their actions exclude them from inheritance. Right. Amen. So he always sends his word. So in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 55, starting with verse number 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, right. neither are my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth. He says, when the rain come down, and the snow come down, it watereth. In other words, it has an intended purpose. Right. It watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth bud, and it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So when God send the rain and when God send the snow, listen to what he does. It, 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 it waters the plants and then the plants give seed right. and that the seed give to the sower that the sower may always have seed to sow. It's a continual process. And from that sowing, uh, there's bread to the eater. Then he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. That's very important. I want you to remember that. That the word shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. So we find that Pentecost is also known as a feast of weeks. Because it goes on for 50 days. It starts with the Passover. Just before the Resurrection Sunday, we... We go back through the Passover, for those of you that come. We talk about what happened during that time and how he was betrayed. But you know what? When I really think about it, betrayal is something that you don't know is coming. Right. So he really was not betrayed in that sense. He knew when it was going to happen. He knew who was going to do it, and he knew when it was done.
So we find that after the Passover supper, he washed his disciples' feet. And he told them, he said, you don't know what I'm doing right now, but you shall. He told them that uh, let, the least, let the greatest among you be the one who serves. Let the greatest among you be the most humble one. Let the greatest among you not be all puffed up in your greatness, but understand that you're only great because of who I am right. and who you are in me. I want to declare unto you a truth. That in my father's house are many mansions. And for years and years, all of us, well me, I'll talk for me, have preached that in the father's house are many mansions, natural mansions. But I declare unto you today that in my father's house there are many degrees of the knowledge of who he is. Yes, sir. Everyone don't understand on your level. Right. I know that the Bible tells us that God has no respect of person, but I do know that he that seeketh that the righteousness, he shall be filled. Yes. And that God will honor him who seeketh after him, and God will open up the one who seeketh him in their understanding as to who he is. So in my Father's house, there are many mansions or levels of understanding of who God is. Oh, I feel like preaching. So we find that after the Passover, that Jesus was taken in the garden, and he was taken to the governor and the rulers of that day in Rome, or the Roman government that was there in Jerusalem. And we find that they could not find any fault in him, so they decided to give it into the hands of the people. It's always a dangerous thing to give major decisions in the hands of the people. Right. We have to seek the Lord. Amen. So the people decided that they would take a thief instead of Jesus. And that they wanted Jesus crucified. Now, we must understand it was just a few days before that they were saying, Hosanna. And they was welcome him into the city. Now they're crying, crucify him. Isn't it funny how people will love you today and hate you tomorrow? Well, maybe I should say love you in the morning and hate you by the afternoon. Right. Truth. So they hung him on the cross. And when they hung him on the cross, he died. He gave up the ghost. Now, there were certain things that it was a process with him. He didn't just die. He had to submit in order to die. He had to submit unto death because he had authority over death. And death could not uh, come and take him without him submitting unto it. Right. That's why he said, no man taketh my life. But I lay it down. Oh, glory. Why are you laying it down? I'm laying it down because a sacrifice has to be given in order for man to have eternal life and live with my father. I come as a lamb. John recognized me at the river of Jordan when he said, Behold the Lamb of God who cometh to take away the sins of the world. Notice Jesus never uh, scolded him or even denied what he said. So they put him in the tomb for three days, and for three days, three days he, his body was there, but his spirit was not there. Three days, I believe, that he went into the outer darkness. Huh. He went to where men were being held. They were being held where death had them captive. But Jesus went there and brought them out. Yes. 
So on the third day he arose, which is also called the feast of the first fruit. The first fruit was normally the barley and, 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 and the wheat that they had received as farmers and they would bring it uh, to Jerusalem to offer it up before the Lord because every able-bodied man had to be in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, on the day of the Passover, and on the Feast of Tabernacle. Uh. So they were making their way with their barley and their wheat, they were trying to get there to be there on the day of that great feast. Everything else was leading up to it. You know how Christmas is when Thanksgiving is over with right. and they had Black Friday. I know some of you don't shop and some of you maybe shop till you drop. You know, it don't matter, but I'm just using this for an example. Yes, uh, it, it, it's, it's leading up to Christmas. Right. And every Day after that is leading up. Sometimes we have office parties. We have family get-togethers all leading up to that great day that we can celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, this was the same thing. They were getting ready to celebrate and to bring their offering. You know what? Back in the day, it was an honor and a joy to be able to bring your offering. People dance because God had blessed them enough that they had an offering to bring. Come on, sir. So on the feast of the first fruit, Jesus rose from the dead as the first offering, as the first fruit of the dead he rose. And after he rose, we say that he resurrected. He was resurrected. I'm going to call this post-resurrection. Huh. Because there was another resurrection that was had to come. There was another resurrection that had to happen. We call it the ascension. Uh -huh. So for 40 days, 40 days. He was up on the earth. He was talking to his disciples concerning the kingdom. Y'all got that? Right. So for 40 days, he hanging around and talking to them. He done talked to Thomas. He done talked to Peter. He done told them how they must love each other and how the greatest must serve the least. He was telling them how men was going to hate them for his name's sake. Right. He was telling them the suffering that they was going to have to go through because they had been identified with him. But he also said, but ye shall receive power. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Go on. Oh, I got another script I got you to read. You got to read this. A very familiar portion of scripture uh, found in St. John 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, and the same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. What was in the beginning with God? The Word. Right. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the light of man, and the light was the light of man. And the light shineth into darkness, or shine in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When we look at natural darkness, when light comes on, darkness flees. For light and darkness cannot coexist. When one comes, the other one leaves. Here, when the truth comes, the darkness of ignorance must leave. They cannot coexist. Because when you know a thing, you know a thing. Is that right? If you have $20 in your pocket, you know it's there. Right. You put it there, and just before that person came and told you you was broke, 
<laughs> you touched your pocket and you felt it there. Right. So no matter how they try to convince you that you don't have any money, they cannot convince you because what? I got it in my pocket. It's in my pocket. Yes, sir. I might not have $21, but I got 20 Well, that's the way knowledge is of the word of God, or knowledge of God, or the knowledge of the truth. That when we operated in darkness, when we were ignorant of God's word, we did things and God winked at us because he knew a better day was coming. Now that we have come into the knowledge of God, we don't operate in the spirit of darkness. So when the word came, darkness had to leave. Now, let's jump down to verse number 14. And the word was made flesh. Yes. So it's no longer a spoken word. It's a living word. Oh, glory. But it is the word nevertheless. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now I want you to remember what Isaiah said. Isaiah said that his word will not return unto him, what? Void. Void. But it shall do what? It shall accomplish the very intent that I intended for it to do. Jesus said, it is expedient that I go away. Right. But if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Let's look at St. John 14. In verse 16, he says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. I'm going to pray to the Father that he give you another comforter. See, I'm the comforter now, but I'm getting ready to go back to my Father. Yes, sir. Uh, why are you going back, Jesus? Because I have accomplished what I was intended to. Ah, uh, I want you to get this. The word shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish what I have sent it to do. Jesus said, I'm going back to my father. He being the word, I'm going back to my father. Why? Because I have accomplished what I had intended to do. My purpose was to redeem mankind. My purpose was to be ransomed for their sin. My purpose was to deliver them into the hands of my father. And I have done that. Now that I've done that, I'm going to return. Woo. I'm going to return unto my father. But I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, what Jesus was saying is that if I don't come, the next administration cannot come on the scene. Because as long as I'm here, the comforter cannot come. Whom the Father will send in my name. Uh-huh. So now we, we see on the 40th day that he was taken up. He was taken up in a cloud. And the disciples, they had a few more questions for him. They wanted to know, Lord, are you going to reestablish Israel to be dominant as they were in that day? And he said, it is not for you to know. 
Why are you asking these kind of questions? Let me tell you of a greater truth. But ye shall receive power. Yes. Ooh. You worried about this, and I'm trying to tell you about that. Uh huh. Yeah, you 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 trying to uh, talk about uh, natural dominance, and I'm trying to give you a spiritual truth that ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, and in all of Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost parts of the earth. We're not in Judea, we're not in Samaria, but we're in the utmost parts of the earth. America hadn't even been discovered yet, but God took care of America. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. Ye shall be my witnesses. So how do I become a witness? Well, I have to catch on fire. Uh, we need some fire in this place. I have to catch on fire. And how do I catch on fire? I come in contact with someone that's burning. Fire begets fire. You on fire? Find somebody that's on fire. Hook up with them. And I guarantee you that the fire that's in them will try to consume you. In other words, put you on fire. But when you're around fireless people, then you're going to be fireless. So now Jesus being taken up. Angel said, the same Jesus. The same Jesus who is taken from you, this same Jesus is going to return. I don't know the day or the hour of his return, but I'm telling you one thing. If you look at the world condition, everything is pointing to the return of Jesus. I heard the songwriter say, be ready when it comes. I heard another songwriter say, don't let him catch you with your works undone. Keep on striving till the victory is won. So now, on the 40th day, he was taken up. They got 10 days before the Feast of Pentecost. So the disciples... He told him to go back to Jerusalem and wait there or to tarry there. Tarry and wait is the same thing. Told them to wait there. So they go to Jerusalem and to the upper room and they are waiting for the promise of the Father. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. They are waiting. They didn't know what to expect, but they were waiting for it to happen. So they decided that they would sing which is perfectly a natural thing to do while you're waiting. Let's just sing a song. I don't know what song they sung, but they were singing, and they were praying, and they were waiting. And somebody came up with the idea that, you know, we ought to have an election and replace Judas. As one of the apostles. So they cast lot, lots. And they appointed one to take the place of Judas. We never hear about him again. Isn't that a strange thing? See, sometimes our intent is good. 
but we're out of order. Sometimes our motives are right, but we're out of order. There's a way of doing things. There's a way things must be done. If you're going to represent Christ, then you got to do it Christ's way. If you don't do it in the way of Christ, then you're doing it on your own. And God is not obligated to bless it. We, we, we find people today that, Brother Jackie, they get called today as a pastor. <laughs> so they say, I'm a pastor. God called me to be a pastor now. They've only been a minister, a licensed minister for, for 30 days. They have no experience in dealing with us. And how many know you need a little experience in dealing with us? Truth, truth. <laughs> so that person, he opens a church, he go out and he find a building, and he rents the building and converts it to a church and put a sign on the door open for business. You get two or three people. He's been in business about six months and now he's a bishop. My God. Haven't had any training. Haven't had any teaching. Not under nobody. Not subject to anyone. But how many know everybody is subject to somebody? That's right. So now he's a bishop. Well, I want you to know that until God says you're that, you're just a person that had papers. It don't mean nothing. It might be all right in the natural law, but we're not dealing in the natural law. We're dealing in spiritual truths. And it's a dangerous thing to handle the soul of man and don't do it right. It's better not to bother with it at all. I didn't get too many amens. So they was holding this business meeting. They cast lots. And after a few days of being in the upper room, and after they had finished that, they really got down to business because they were counting down the days as well. And as they were counting down the days, the Bible says in Acts, in the second chapter, and. See, all of this happened. Now he uses a conjunction. And the story goes on. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. It was Pentecost day. They were with one accord in one place. What do you mean? I mean their minds were together. Their thoughts were together. Their objectives was one. And they began to be in one place. They were there in one place with one accord, with one mind, one spirit. If we could ever come together and everybody agreed on a certain thing, I'm here to declare unto you that God will hear us. Now when they were together with one place and one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and it set up on each of them cloven tongues when I look or think of a clove to me it means a dividing right God began to divide the tongue. The tongue of what I know to a tongue that I don't know. So when the Spirit of God rests upon them, they begin to speak in a tongue that they did not know. Right. 
But God was not speaking to them. He was speaking through them. And who was he speaking to? He was speaking to all of those men that finally arrived in Jerusalem. That come from Egypt. That come from all the utmost parts of the world. They arrived there in Jerusalem because they had to to celebrate the feast of the Passover. Or the feast of the Pentecost. So they were there, and all of a sudden these men, these ignorant men. Now let me describe to you what I mean by ignorance. I don't mean that you're a nut or a fool or anything like that. I don't mean that. What I mean is that you're unlearned. And we all are ignorant in some areas. Right. How many understand that uh, how an airplane flies? Come on, sir. Brother Rick, you're the only one. How many know how many pounds of pressure, uh, uh, of fuel you need in order to make that engine uh, fly? And, and once you get in the air, how many know how to bring it down safely? Safely. <laughs> uh-huh. We're ignorant to that. How many know, and I'm sure some are glad, how many know how the automobile industry came up with the idea and the know-how to make your car Horizontally park. Well, sir. Come on, sir. Yeah, I was glad because most of can't do it. Right? <laughs> hit the pole, hit the car. Well, well, you just back up till you hear something. So we're all ignorant to something. Right? <laughs> These men were ignorant, not in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They were ignorant in the languages of the people that arrived there in Jerusalem. So now when the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me just go back to a few minutes. A rushing mighty wind. So now, now, now my mind goes back to the valley of the dry bones. When skin was upon the bones and, 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 and muscle and tissue and, and all those things that was needed to make that person live uh, and they were still laying in the field, the Lord told the man of God, he said, prophesy to the four winds, man of God. Call forth the winds to come and blow breath into these that they might live. I want you to know that when on the day of Pentecost, when they heard the sound of a rushing mighty wind, it wasn't a natural wind that they heard, but it was a spiritual wind. And when that wind began to get in them, they began to speak in other tongues. It wasn't an unknown tongue. It was only unknown to them. But it was other tongues because someone understood it. So they began to speak. And when they began to speak, they spoke with joy. I don't understand how you get the Holy Ghost and don't have no joy. I don't understand how you receive the Holy Ghost and don't have no excitement. I don't understand how you have the Holy Ghost and you say, well, it's just another day in the kingdom. The devil is alive. When you receive the Holy Ghost, joy comes with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that right? When you receive the Holy Ghost, the desire to live right comes with it. I'm going to lay my religion down. And I'm going to tell somebody else, see, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir. You might have had a warm and fuzzy feeling, <laughs> but you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not religion. No way. Well, sir. The Holy Ghost is salvation. It becomes a personal relationship with the one that gave it. He is, so am I in the earth. 
Glory to God. My God. And he said, greater works shall we do. Is that his word? Am I in the word? Yes, sir. Greater works shall we do. That's what God wants for us. That's, our, that's his purpose for us. That's his thoughts toward us. That we may do greater works than he did. Now, in order to do greater works than Jesus did, we got, we got some coming up to do. Right. Right. So on that great day, on that feast day, the day of Pentecost, when Pentecost had fully come, and they were speaking in other tongues, and they were rejoicing, they was making a whole lot of noise. I want you to know that a Pentecost church is a church of noise. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Well, I feel it in my hands. No, honey. When you feel it, I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it all over me. Anybody ever felt the Holy Ghost all over you? Anybody ever felt the Holy Ghost moving to the point that you wanted to run, that you wanted to dance, that you wanted to shout hallelujah? All you wanted to do is give God praise. Why? Because of the Holy Ghost fire. Let me tell you about the word. So, is the word the Holy Ghost. The Word and the Holy Ghost is one. For Jesus said, I'm with you, but there shall be a time that I won't be with you, but I shall be in you. <laughs> so the works that's being done is not of me, but it's of the Holy Ghost that's within me. I'm only a carrier of his glory. And I'm mighty afraid until more people get the Holy Ghost. Until more people catch on fire. We won't need a fire truck here. What we need is an arsonist. <laughs> We need somebody that loves fire. Can you shout fire? So when the men in Jerusalem heard these ignorant men speaking their native tongue right. where they could understand they asked the question, what meaneth this? You know, aren't these unlearned men? Huh. But how many know that the Lord can use anybody? Mm -hmm. Aren't these unlearned men? And somebody had the nerve to say they're drunk. And they got old Peter riled up. Right. And Peter stood up and said, these men are not drunk as ye suppose. Now, I ain't saying they ain't drunk, just not like you think. For it is not the time of day yet to be drinking. But this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel when he said in the last days said God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh somebody ought to say this is that oh y'all don't believe it say it again this is that the men that had received the Holy Ghost they was dancing and shouting having a good time Peter was trying to talk, and they was jumping up and down. See, I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, 
When you receive it, you know it. Nobody has to tell you you have the Holy Ghost. Right. Don't nobody have to say, well, that's it. No, you tell them, I got it. And that is God's intent. Isn't it amazing he chose the day of Pentecost, the day of offering to birth the church? Until Pentecost, there was no church. Huh. Until Pentecost, until Jesus left and turned over the administration of the world until the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, I see something here. In the day of all, it was the Father that controlled it. Salvation time, it was the Son that controlled it. Now he's turning it over to the Holy Ghost. For these three are what? One. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say thou art Elias or Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But who say ye that I am? Now you've been walking with me. Who do you say I am? Peter said thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. His disciples wanted to know if you will show us the father, then we'll be satisfied. And Jesus said, have I been so long with you? Have I been so long eating with you? Have I been so long walking with you? Have I been so long teaching you? Have I been so long doing miracles in your sight? And you ask me to show you the Father and that will suffice you? Listen, boy. Jesus? When you see me, you see the Father. For me and the Father, we're one. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the word went back to God. The word went back because it had accomplished its purpose. Now it's up to us. Now it's up to us. What are you going to do with the power? What are you going to do with the that? <laughs> what you going to do with the that? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Oh, I, I, I love this. I love this. Jesus said... I just asked the question, what you going to do with the vet? Jesus said, you should lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. You should be able to pick up serpents. And they will not harm you. Drink any deadly thing. And it'll do you no harm. For you need to do something with the vet. Instead of sitting on the vet, you need to activate the vet. I'm done. Holy Ghost. Pentecost. We don't like to be identified. But we say, well, it ain't about being no Baptist. It ain't, it's not about being a Methodist. I don't care if you are a Baptist. You can be a Pentecostal Baptist. You can be a Pentecostal Methodist. You can be a Pentecostal Church of God in Christ. You can be a Pentecost, whatever denomination you want, but you must experience Pentecost. You must experience being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit of God give utterance. You should want to have joy. You should want joy. You should want joy. Have you ever been sick and tired? 
of being sick and tired. I know to maybe some of the young people, they don't understand what I'm getting ready to say, so I'm going to come over here. This is the older side of the church. <laughs> there was a cartoon character, and his name was Popeye. And Popeye would say when he got sick and tired, he would say, I have stood all I can stand. Because I can't what? Stands no more. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when he said, when I can't stand no more, he found some spinach somewhere. See, y'all know what I'm talking about. They're looking at me over here like, what in the world? You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of going through the same test. I'm sick and tired of going through the same road. I'm sick and tired of going around the same mountain. I need a new mountain to go around. I need the joy of the Lord to sustain me and take me through what I'm going through. You're not going to get through it without the joy of the Lord. And you're not going to have the joy of the Lord without the Holy Ghost. And you can't have the Holy Ghost until you have a Pentecost experience. Stop teaming up with the worst, with the weakest person in the church. Find somebody that can't stop jumping. Find somebody that can't stop speaking in tongues. Hook up with them. Find somebody that's excited about going to church. You know, you can always kind of tell where you're at when it's church time. Well... We got to go to church again. Now, you ain't been here in three weeks. Well, got to go to church again. You don't come to Bible class. You don't come to the women's meeting. You don't come to the men's meeting. Well, we always in church. No, I'm always in church. You're seldom here. Don't come to prayer. Well, the reason I don't come to prayer, Pastor, is just too early. Well, what about Tuesday at 11 a.m.? What about Tuesday at 6.30? What about Sunday at 8.30? What about prayer then? Well, no. Let me tell you something. You will not survive without prayer. Right. You want to know when, when the enemy gets on our side and starts throwing sucker punches while we able to stand it? It's because of prayer. Right? There's things that God do in prayer individually and corporately. But you need the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. I declare you need it. Don't leave here without it. Now, I I would think that most of you know, and if you didn't know, Mother Watson passed away on last week on Thursday morning. Some of you didn't know her because she's been out sick for a while. But the ones of us that know her, the one thing that we knew about her is that she wanted the Holy Ghost. He wanted the Holy Ghost. And we have a faithful missionary in the form of Mother Dorothy Lynch. Faithful missionary. Mother Lynch worked with her and worked with her and worked with her 
Sometimes you need some morning women. You need, you, you need the ones that, uh, that can come and help. Pray them through. That have patience and love and work with them and work with them and work with them. She had to work with them through the TV and work through it through this and that and the other. But one day when time was ticking down. Expiration date was about to come up. She prayed. Now she had prayed this prayer before. But she prayed. And this time when she prayed, Mother received the Lord and received the Holy Ghost. believe that when she said let's pray again you know <laughs> when you receive the Holy Ghost it's such a joy you want to do it again now I ain't never been on crack or heroin but they tell me that your first high is what keep you coming back is that right that's what they say I don't know for sure but something keep him coming back. But I want you to know today that I'm hooked on Jesus. I declare that I'm an addict. But I'm just not an addict as you suppose. I'm hooked on that feeling of the Holy Ghost. I'm hooked on the joy of the Holy Ghost. I'm an addict. This is Jane. I know you've been clean about 13 years. Is that right? Th 13 years you've been clean. Well, I want you to know that for over 40 years, I've been given dirty urine. For 40 years. They say, give a urine drop. Full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, get your mind up. Full of the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost is just not in your head. The Holy Ghost is in your mouth. The Holy Ghost is in your ears. The Holy Ghost is in your eyes. The Holy Ghost is in your heart. The Holy Ghost is in your gut. The Holy Ghost is in your hands. It's in your ears. It's in your feet. It's all over you. It consumes you totally. I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost. You know, you have leather and pleather. Maybe some of y'all know what pleather is. It's naugahyde. Imitation leather. It looked good at first. And after a while, it started peeling. Turn to somebody and say, leather don't peel. <laughs> Hallelujah. The dye might come off, but it ain't peeling. It's the same thing with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't going to peel. Once you receive it, you nourish it, you keep it fresh. And if you haven't spoken tongues in a while, you ought to say, Lord, let me speak in tongues. Let me feel what I first felt. Andre Krause said, take me back. I'm not saying take me back, but what I'm saying is, Lord, let me feel it again. Do what you did once before. Do it over again. Give me my joy back. Give me my excitement back. Give me my zeal back. Give me that fire back. Give me that faith that I can do all things through Christ. All right. All right. I'm, I'm done this time for real. And I know once again that I didn't teach, but I tried. But the word 
shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the very intent that I intended for it to do. So look, if you need joy, get you some scriptures on joy. Start reading those scriptures. Put your name in it. If you need to be confident, find you some scriptures on comfort. For the Lord is Gregory's shepherd, and he shall not want. That's how personal it becomes. Put your name there. And the Lord wants to heal. He wants to feel. I feel it in my gut. He wants to pour out. But you got to be around somebody with some fire. Ice and fire do not mix. Amen. So if you're here today and you're saying, I want the fire of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to ask you to come.